Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark with another transmission from Mech Tech. And today I'm just doing a real quick video. Um, I was honestly surprised there aren't many uh, Keychron V4 videos out there. Um, and I haven't found one that does a teardown yet. I do plan to fully mod this, but I wanted to just go ahead and do a quick teardown so that everybody can at least see what's inside of there and get some ideas. I, I will be coming back to modding it, but I don't have much time right now. So I just wanted to do a real quick, um, just open her up. Let's see what she's got in it. And, um, you know, I know that we got some foam pads. I think that for this kit, probably the, um, the best mods that are going to be available are going to be maybe a PE foam mod, perhaps a Tempest tape mod if there's enough space. And, um, let me see, um, modifying the stabilizers either with the plumber's tape mod or the holy mod. So I've still got the keys on here, but there should be enough room to, uh, go ahead and get, get it apart with the keys still on the uh, plate and PCB. I, I gotta say, this is probably one of my favorite uh, 60 percents. Now, granted, I know I never uh, got a uh, tofu, and everybody just goes crazy over the tofu. Um, I ha I do have a back and echo 60, and I do not like that. I mean, I want I want a better O-ring board. I just the design of the back and echo, um, how it uses clip-in stabilizers and then expects those stabilizers to also be the mount points for the O-ring and, and it just doesn't work. I don't know how many times I've gone to just change a, a key cap and then, oh, there comes the switch. And then all of a sudden, because, you know, the switch, the switches are what's holding the, um, holding everything in place everything pops out and then you, just one switch pops out you a lot of times end up having to pull the whole pcb out unplug it put the switches back in the keys back it's a pain in the butt i'm um, honestly unless i got a defective unit i really don't understand what the big deal with back and echoes were uh because i mean it's just it's a poor design i know it's open source but still i mean put in screw and stabilizers or use clipping that's fine but put separate studs to actually not only hold the plate and the PCB together, but also so they serve as anchor points for the ring. Because stabilizer should not be anchoring the O-ring that's also providing pressure, because I mean, it's a pressure fit. Obviously that's gonna put pressure on the stabilizer in a way that it's not meant to be. So that's why I'm just not, <laughs> I thought I was gonna love the back and echo. I was so looking forward to it. Then I got it and I was like, what am I doing wrong? Anyway, I'm not here to shit on the back and echo. Oh, excuse my French. I'm not here to to uh, make fun fun of the back and echo. I'm just here to open this this puppy up. So that's one set of screws. So yeah, these look like uh, I would guess maybe an M3, M4, um, Allen wrench, and I'm just using the tools at hand. I think my my magic or wow stick or whatever it's called is currently charging that should probably be charged already but let's see what we find in here i mean i'm really i i, I gotta say keychron is definitely up their game i mean for the longest time i mean we've had the k series and i mean qaqc i mean if anybody who's bought a keychron you know going back a few years knows uh that you could get two and one of them would work perfectly and the other one maybe it would work but so but now i mean i i did come across one that had a buy issue but i was able to fix by reflashing uh qmk so i think that they've they they've definitely they've upped their game in my opinion they definitely have upped their game so you got to give credit where credit's due Right. So now we've got them apart. Let's go ahead and see what we've got. All right, so we got a frame. It's pretty uh, flimsy, but this is something you're not gonna find. I don't think in any <laughs> budget uh, keyboard for below like 110, 120 dollars. I mean, 
those are metal inserts. What does that mean? You can screw this open and closed as many times as you wish. I mean, you run a chance of stripping the screw, but not any more than you would on anything else. As long as you're careful, you're gonna be fine. But when it's plastic, you've got a limited number of times before that screw hole is stripped. And a lot of times too, they use very soft metal screws and they can get stripped um, by going in backwards or just not being perfectly straight. I mean, it's, if you ever are turning a screwdriver and it starts skipping, you're either off angle or you're using the wrong size bit. Just a, just a tip from your uncle, Mark. So anyway, all right, so we've got this uh, beautiful bezel. I do, it's funny, I on phones I'm like, it's got bezel but on keyboards i'm like it's got bezel <laughs> so liking that a lot now let's see what we've got here all right do we huh whoa oh there was that was my space bar All right, so I'm guessing we may have to take off the keys because it looks like the plate is screwed on there. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. Yeah, I know, I, I don't recommend anyone do this. <laughs> but while I'm sitting here doing it. You know how the old saying goes, do as I say, not as I do, right? Isn't that what they say? I should be able to leave the switches in. Actually, I didn't need to take all the keys out, only the ones where the screws are at, but probably just cleaner this way. These are Yonkui double shot PBT sh that I got for 19 bucks off the Yonkui store. And I'm actually very pleasantly surprised. Um, they're, honestly, they're as good quality as definitely a DCX. They're just below quality of GMK. But that's maybe by a tenth of a millimeter in thickness. Other than that, they're fine. I tried with some older switches and they're thick enough to actually interfere. So oh, that's funny because that's actually an indicator of how thick they are. Ooh, and I've lost it. All right. So now we see we've got the reset button. That's to put it in bootloader mode when you're loading up QMK. No need to do that for VIA. It should automatically pop up on VIA. So again, we're going to go ahead and use the screw. Let me see. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So we got eight screws holding the plate down onto the case. We're going to go ahead. Ooh, these puppies are in there. Good. Oh, and the screwdriver is actually magnetized that's a uh, nice uh surprise all right they are definitely nice and tight in there <sighs> having to put some torque into it but they are nice screws. I'm not getting any slip from them. They're sticking nicely. I mean, I really think that Keychron is <laughs> running to become one of the uh, bigger keyboard makers because I don't know if anybody caught it. I was on uh, NBC or MSNBC the other day. They actually did a uh, little piece about that new Melgeek Lego keyboard. So I was honestly expecting 24, 2024, 2025 before this would become more mainstream. But I think we're going to see this becoming more mainstream over the holiday season and into 2023. Um, should be interesting. I think a lot of people are... You're going to be pleasantly surprised that, hey, wait a minute, I can customize my keyboard? No. All right, did we get all the screws? I think we did. But just to be sure. Nope, there's one. All right. I always seem to miss that one screw. 
just, I have a screw blindness. All right, that should be it. Now, we do have a mode switch there, so obviously we want to be careful not to break that. Well, it's not a mode switch, it's the Windows Mac mode switch. Well, I guess it is a mode switch, just not a wireless, because that's the only thing about these. Most Keychrons, uh, you can expect to come wireless, but that's the K-series and the C-series, not the uh, Q-series. All right, I want to do this in a way to where, obviously I don't want to break that mode switch, but it feels like something else is holding it down. Or it just wants to come, oh, okay, never mind, there we go. Just have to come straight up. All right, so there we are. There's the PCB. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, wait a minute. I'm counting. Never mind. I was counting the screw and stabilizers. Looks like we have two, three, four screws that appears holding the PCB and plate together. And you can see that we have a nice uh, thick foam in there. That's actually for me from pulling it up. Um, yeah, it's a pretty closed cell foam. So it acts pretty well as an insulator. Um, so, like I said, I don't have the time today to do any modifications, but what I will be doing to this is definitely the tape, Tempest tape mod. I'm gonna be doing three layers, and I think I can do it and still uh, have the room in here. Now, as you can see, we do have a lovely uh, custom fit a silicon pad, which looks very similar to that waffle mark that we see on the uh, translucent V1. But I mean, this is a, um, actually, I like those little, I mean, I don't know if they do anything for, for actual sound dampening or absorption, but I definitely like how it looks on the uh, translucent kits. But it's got, I mean, after doing a lot of silicone pours, I, I'd love to see one piece silicone molds for the bottom of cases. So for me, what I'm going to be doing, um, obviously everyone can be different, but I think I'm going to go ahead and do the Tempest tape mod. I'm going to go ahead and do the plumbers mod to the stabilizers, even though they're, they're pretty good to begin with, but I think I can add a little bit more tolerance and make them just that much better. I'm also going to add maybe one or two layers of PE foam to the PCB in between the PCB and um, the dampener. And all right, all right, that's in there. So, um, so yeah, this is actually. I'm gonna say this is probably gonna be one of the easiest kits to mod. I'm almost something to do it right now. If I had the time, I would. Um, but I've got to say, uh, I mean, out of the box, it's pretty good. I mean, really, all you, I mean, if you just want, you know, to do the minimal, I would just do the stabilizers. I would clean them up. I would uh, either, I prefer the plumber's tape mod over the holy mod because the holy mod tends to come loose. I don't care what kind of tape you use, even with the high temperature tape, the flux tape, this this kind of tape, I forget what it's called, but um, it will still it will still come off, no matter what. Um, I and I'm now three and in, three months into a test for a kit that I build for Kerbal, because he was like, well, they might work, but they're meant for um, threaded, you know, because the plumber's tape is meant to to seal threaded uh, joints. And I was like, well, that's a good point. Let me try on a keyboard that I use on a regular basis. And it's a keyboard that I use actually at my video workstation. So I use practically every day. And um, I'm at three months right now and I still don't have any issues. Uh, there's no slippage. Uh, they all, they seem to be in the same exact spot that I, that I put. The, the tape seems to be in the same exact spot. So anyway, uh, like I said, I just wanted to do a, a quick tear down for you guys. So you guys can see you know what's going to be in there when you open her up uh i think that if you're going to do the minimal just stick to the stabilizers otherwise uh really the only 
other mods that I feel can be performed to this besides the stabilizers are going to be a Tempest tape mod and a PE foam mod um, or PE, the PE foam pads if you prefer those uh, like I've actually for some sometimes these are good like if I'm not taking the plate and the uh, PCB apart sometimes I just use these it takes a bit longer but they're still just as nice and they they, they deliver a very similar effect so it's really more matter of preference obviously cutting a pe foam and just sticking it on there is usually the easiest way to go with it so that said i hope that you guys enjoyed this tear down i hope um it helps you guys you know give you any ideas of what you want to do and also i hope it helps you to decide whether you want if you're getting this one or getting any of the v-series if you want the solid black color or if you want to get the uh, the transparent black color so i mean so you can see kind of the differences here but they got that waffle pattern i gotta say i like that i like that a lot so hopefully we've got enough room for the uh for the tempest tape mod we may not because that silicone mat um is there but maybe you know what maybe we'll actually try some different things um to put in there maybe some polyfill maybe uh some noiko uh, maybe different things and just see how it sounds with the different um, materials in there who knows we'll have fun with it but like I said I only had a few minutes free so I just wanted to do a quick tear down of the Keychron V4 60% since there doesn't seem to be any so at least you got a guide um, it's a pretty simple kit if you've got it let me know about it let me know what you think about it down in the comments below until next time keep calm keyboard on